Jumptron. Pokemon, a series dearly beloved by many. Few games can claim to harness its gravitational pull. This golden goose has sold millions upon millions of copies, spawned countless varieties of merchandise, and touched multiple generations of kids and adults alike. How many franchises do you know that bridge the generational gap? Now I know what you're probably thinking to yourself. Why are you telling me this? I've played them all. I've been to them all. I've been to Kanto, Johto, Ancho, Habanero, Poblano, Antonio Banderas. I swung them all, sister. Swung with the best. But you ain't never seen the likes of this. That's right. With every big fish, there's a leech on the belly. Today, we're gonna have a look at the fascinating world of bootlegged Pokemon games. Now, now, these aren't games you can find in stores. They're games that made their way into circulation one way or another. None of them are licensed or acknowledged by Nintendo, and they're pretty damn hard to find. First off, let's look at what's known as Pocket Monster. It's inferred that it was released in the year 2000 by DVS Electronics, because on the box art there are two small icons reading New Game and 2000. Hey, it's not empirical science, but what can I tell you, I'm a simple man. It's strange, the label on my game says Pokemon Pikachu Edition, which first off isn't even the name of the game at hand, but if you peel back the label, there's another label that says Pikachu and it's spelled wrong? What is this game? Who made it? Why? Look at his Pikachu, seriously, is it any wonder why he's so popular? Even when he's half-assed and bootlegged, he still melts my heart. I can feel the money loosening from my wallet already. He's like, he's all like, fuck you. Alright, I just, I gotta leave, okay? No, we just started, come on, man. We listen, just, listen, we gotta... there's a lot to see in this life. Not wasting it here. Well, there's a shocker for you. Five seconds into the game, and it's already like. <laughs> Look at his arms flailing. Even he's confused and terrified. Hey, I'm not blaming him. I would be too. Listen to this music. This is not level one music. Talk about putting the player on edge right away. This game is extremely hard to play. When Pikachu jumps, the entire game lags. Every. Single. Time. But then when you just want to go forward, he speeds up like a power walker with a New York minute to spare. So it's like you're constantly in a battle between game speeds. Makes the platforming real difficult right off the bat. Also, can we take a minute to talk about the fact that Pikachu has the face of a, a balding middle-aged man? Curly Howard, is that you? Did you come back? Did you come back from the ground, Mausoleum? Even more ridiculous than all that is his walk cycle. I mean, look at that thing! Coupled with the music, it's like a vaudeville act in here. Maybe it really is curly because, I mean, they started as a vaudeville act back in 1925. But that's not that funny, though, because they're all dead. I thought they were supposed to be funny. It's so bizarre seeing a Pokemon game actually playing on my SNES. Ah, this game's like a breath of fresh air because it showcases all the Pokemon that we've come to know and love over the years. You can see Beedrill, Porygon, Monkey, Mario Dinosaur, Poop, Abomination. What is this? Is this what happens when illicit Pokemon breeding goes unchecked? I'm looking at this from every goddamn angle there is. I can't tell where it starts and where it ends. Well, it's got a pine cone for a body. It's uh, wearing a fez. And it's got that one staring, unblinking eye that reminds you that this creature lives in never-ending, ceaseless agony. Oh, by the way, this game's pure bullshit. You can never see what's below you, so you always have to take leaps of faith that more often than not lead to your untimely demise. And it doesn't even matter how far you get. There's no checkpoint. So if you die, it's straight back to the beginning. When you drop back into the game after a death, that's you! That's an accurate representation of you saying, No, don't put me back in, please! The continue screen looks like a PSA for abused Pokemon. To me, it's as if he's laying there, wounded in the light, and a Pokeball rolls up to him, and Ash says, Keep going, Pikachu, or it's back in the ball for you. <laughs> mm, no, I don't want it! Gotcha. Oh, shit! So I finally beat the first level. Boss is a Snorlax. Pretty energetic for a Snorlax, wouldn't you say? So at the beginning of level two, you just see Ash say, it's hot? Oh, he's coming. Any minute now. Oh, there he is. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, by it's hot, he meant literally, it's a, it's a, it's a fire level. Thanks for looking out for me, Ash. I really appreciate it. 
is it Scutson? What is that? Is that Branson? Is that, is that tap dancing crab demon? Is that nightmare? Is that true nightmare? Strangely enough, there's another SNES Pokemon game. It's a port of Pokemon Stadium for the N64, it looks like. The biggest difference being that there's a predetermined roster of 12 Pokemon. Hmm, don't those names just look strikingly familiar? Who could forget Spia and Daggett and Rafe? It is a fully fledged game, but there's not much to say about it. I'm just baffled that it exists at all. Next up is Pokemon Adventure on the Game Boy Color. Oh man, this one looks great! It looks like a game Nintendo actually could have made. Let's do this! I'm ready to go on this balloon based adventure with Pikachu! What? What's happening? Uh, nope! Got it! Fuck! Can I just have a break? Can I just have one break? I'm not playing this up, okay? These were my actual first moments with the game. Complete confusion. You know, this game sets up a certain special scenario for you. It says, welcome to the game. That's the one thing you can see. Fuck you. This is clearly a platformer. Why is the first enemy unkillable? Is this just a way to condition me for the journey ahead? Something you might notice is that Pikachu jumps like Sonic. He's even got those super fast spinny feet when he runs, like in Sonic 2. Oh, hey, and he even charges up in a, in a, in a ball, in, like, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yep, that's Sonic. That's Sonic. It's so it's Sonic! It turns out that this is actually a hack of an existing hack for the Game Boy Color called Sonic Adventure 7. What happened to th what happened to 3 through 6? Do you even realize what this means? Ladies and gentlemen, we are playing what could be the world's very first double hack. <laughs> Warning, John. You are in danger of reaching head capacity. Next one up's a bit weird. It's called Moemon. This one's weird. I don't know what to say about it. It's Pokemon with little girls. I mean, it's very obvious that a lot of uh, care and passion went into making this. I mean, you can actually tell which Pokemon is which by looking at those beautifully crafted sprites. But... Why? Do you realize that for this to happen, someone had to sit down, look at Pokemon, and say, you know, this is great, but it, just, it needs more little girls. I'm gonna go downstairs to my basement now next to my little girl dungeon and program this game. Welcome to Planet Earth, ladies and gentlemen. The next two games I want to talk about are Pokemon Diamond and Jade. Huh, I guess someone beat Nintendo to the punch with Diamond there. But, oh, this is not the Diamond version you're thinking of. Because that would be a time machine. And I know you don't have any of those laying around. In this particular instance, we know Diamond is better than Jade because Jade has a, a, a goat demon on the box. And look at it, just look at the eyes. I think there's feeling behind those eyes. I feel a bit, of, a bit of a chill. So I think I'm starting to maybe feel ghosts or something. So I just want to point out that at the beginning of this Pokemon game, there's a um, armadillo on a cell phone. I mean, presumably just trying to get reception in this forest because let's face it, there's not much reception out there. Oh, hold on a second. Talk about rocking out with your cock out. I bet you $50 that's the guy who made Moemon back there. That's Mr. Moemon. This game is taking something completely fantastical, the world of fantasy monsters, and bringing it down to the most mundane level. He's like, did you remember to pick up the baking soda? So this game has some weird fascination with cell phones. Yeah, it totally gets me in the Pokemon spirit. Oh, it's decide time. It's time to make substantial decisions about my life and career. Oh, wait, never mind. Literally just wants me to tell the time. I bet at this point you're all saying to yourselves, John, what is this shit? Get it out of my face. This doesn't look anything like a Pokemon game. Well, if that's what you were thinking, you'd be right. It is in fact a Japanese cell phone themed RPG called Keitai Denju Telefang. Okay, now get this. It means mobile phone beast. Telefang. God damn it, that was the word I wanted to know most. What in God's name is a telefang? Listen, Japan, I know this was the early 2000s, but I just can't see a series about monsters talking on telephones ever catching on. Damn it, he's nothing. Yeah, you can say that again. Now, the next one's actually one of my favorite ones. It's called Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal. Yeah, that's actually what it's called. That's racist. Now you listen here, Pip Pip, a racist mind is a racist kind. Now you, you, you take that to sleep with you tonight, because I know it's not, I'm not going to change hearts and minds in a day. You don't give a man a peanut, expect him to have a farm the next day. But it's all right. It's all right. One day, we will all be equal on this earth. Until then, I'm going to give you a kiss, Muffin. 
This game is exactly as advertised. It's Pokemon Crystal for Game Boy Color, but translated to Vietnamese and sold on the street as a bootleg. Oh, but that is not what sets this game apart from the rest. What makes this one so special is the bizarre translation. Welcome! It's... Elf's World? Elf's World? Oh man, this game's bringing the nostalgia right back. How could I forget the first time I ever met Professor Oak? Oh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, how could I have been so rude? I meant to call him by his preferred name. Elf Monster. He literally demands that not just me, but everyone call him... Elf Monster. I, I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. I'm sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up. Elves. Here are called Monster. Well, that's good to know. He looks happy enough about it. They existed everywhere. Oh, that's terrible. What happened to them? They play friendly, help each other. There are many secrets inside to know these riddles. Oh, philosophy-wise, he's up there with the greats. Aristotle, Plato, Confucius, meth head down my street that forgot how to speak English from too much meth. Please check the time. Well, it was about a quarter past one. Why'd you want me to do that? How many minutes? Uh, I don't know, there's about 60 of them in an hour. Are we talking days? Weeks? Years? Oh, okay, looks like I gotta set the time. What F three hen time? Well, that's a fantastic question. I don't know myself. Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. I mean, you don't gotta yell. I didn't know it meant so much to you. F three H 17 mm bad. Sleep too late. Yeah, I think I'm gonna quit here. This game's starting to judge my lifestyle. I, just, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that. I made it past age 18. I pay my bills. I pay my taxes. I'm gonna sleep late if I fucking want to. Fuck you. Let's get back to the real games here. Pokemon 4-in-1 on the NES. That's just so weird to me. A Pokemon game on a console 10 years older than the original game. Who thought this was a good idea? Essentially, what we've got here is just a collection of minigames based around Pokemon, three of which apparently revolve around Pika, the eating disorder which causes people to ingest inedible objects. And speaking of food, Pikachu himself looks like a, a fucking potato. Pika click, Pika slot, Pika dance, and... P p Pac-Man? That one is just called fucking Pac-Man. Okay, hold on. No, that is the only game that had a P in it to begin with. They could have just as easily called it Pika-Man, as all the others are themed with Pika. But no, they just left it Pac-Man. All right, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they didn't want the subtlety of their uh, blatant theft to be lost on the masses. Pika-Click is just a game where you match blocks. I don't know what's going on with this one. I don't even know if you can lose. Okay, click, 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 fuck it. I don't give a shit. Pika slot is stupid too. It's just a slot machine. Literally. It's just luck. Press the button and watch it go. The only feedback you get from this game is the win box on the right. Who would, who would, play, who would play this? Who would end it? Pac-Man. Oh, now this one's good. This one has some depth to it. Probably because it's Pac-Man. Literally, it's Pac-Man and it changed the course of the gaming market when it came out because it's... F fucking Pac-Man! Pika Dance is great. Oh, look at him go! Set to the song Butterfly by Smile DK. Where are these Pokemon going to? I think I want to head up there with them. Oh, not to mention, every single high score on this game is DDR, 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 didn't bother to hide it, DDR, didn't bother to hide it, Pac-Man, DDR, lose, 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 lose! Well, my work's done here. I'm gonna go get a goddamn glass of bootleg milk. Calm my f goddamn nerves. I feel like Geppetto in the goddamn Pinocchio musical. Wait a second, isn't this that version of Pokemon where the Pokemon actually die instead of faint? And it had that version of Lavender Town that caused all those Japanese kids to get mysteriously ill. Oh, I should get rid of this. Well, maybe I'll just have... one play. Boobs. Black Friday approaches, and that means one thing. Grandma's out getting trampled just to get you the same old gift. Crappy video games. 
Oh, you got me Monopoly this year for the Nintendo 64? Well, this would have been great back in 1864. You know, when it was impressive just to not die from being 35. We all got games like this, you know the ones, bottom of the bin, and literally bottom of the bin at the grocery store. But in this category, one genre reigns supreme, the plug and play games. You know, one of these. Why buy your loved ones a $50 Spongebob game for their Wii in which you have to, you know, put the disc in, then figure out which cords plug in from the box machine into the TV, and then you gotta maybe, like, switch it on, and who knows what else from there. When for $20, you can get them the magical device that plugs right into their TV, already has the game inside of it, and is also a toy of Spongebob's face. That's like, what, it's like 18 toys in one. Now, plug-and-play games have been around for decades, but their true rise to popularity began in the early 2000s, led by a company called Jax Pacific. Remember, this was before downloadable content and virtual console re-releases were widespread. The most you'd see were those GBA ports of NES games, so at the time, it made sense. Of course people were gonna be like, you're telling me there were 10 classic Namco video games in this one small box that looks like a tiny version of the bigger box it used to be in? Well, sign me and the rest of America up! We got a couple of years for the housing crisis, let's have some fun! So basically, what started as an innocent way to port some classic video games in a novel way spiraled into a massive business. I mean, these things were everywhere, look at the ones I have. These two are both classic Namco games, pretty cool, pretty cool, standard stuff. There's a lot of these in the Marvel Super Heroes series. This one's on Spider-Man, I guess. Hey, Spidey, you think you could, you know, back off a bit? You know the saying, a watched man never plays. A lot of these are just a penis. This one, this, this one is Spider-Man's penis. Bombs away. This one is uh, Fantastic Four's uh, creepy golem penis. Okay. Is this good? Is this bad? I, I'm sorry, man. I kind of have to do this. Oh, my goodness. That's a bit barbaric, isn't it? Poor bastard. Weird, gross, ew, this is the, that's the Shrek one. This one is my personal favorite. Spider-Man po points at your dick while you play. You can't make that up. That's really how they designed this. What the hell were they thinking? Deal or no deal, no deal. Scooby's really uh, going to town on the back of the mystery machine here and Fred's like, uh, uh, Scoob, no, it's a kid's show, don't. I mean, to be honest, most of the games aren't horrible. The Scooby-Doo one's pretty appealing. The graphics are nice. Even the Marvel ones aren't bad. They're basically side-scrolling beat-em-ups, although I assume anyone would get tired of these before long. But don't get me wrong. There are the bad ones. Like the one where you plunder a sewer for the lizard. Forever. And ever. Oh, there he is. Wonderful. Shrek Golf. I asked for this? But of course, as to be expected, any good fad comes with its fair share of bootlegs. I mean, why don't you just go ask our good friend Robert Cop over here? Oh, and of course, don't forget everyone's favorite crime-fighting alliance, Sense of Right. Everyone's here. Batman, Superman, Shrek, a car. Oh, no. What I'm saying is, it didn't take long for counterfeiters to hop on the plug-and-play gravy train. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a... a are, are you sitting? Game Philip. Perfect for children with no necks. Finally, a game system for me! Digital stereo sound, high-tech controller, dazzling 3D graphics, and spectacular color. And to top it off, 88 games in one. What can I say? I'm sold! Uh, wait, hold on. 8-bit game? I thought you said it was dazzling 3D graphics. Philip, make up your goddamn mind! This thing has the audacity to promote as a selling point that it comes with AV cables. Yeah, don't even get me started on the previous version. I can make this work. All right, enough about the box. Let's talk about what's actually on this thing. Okay, Spider-Man. I know that. This ought to be good. Oh, it actually is kind of good. But it's just a port of the NES title. In fact, this whole thing is just NES ports with mistranslated titles. 634-Ken? Eh, never heard of that one. Ooh, that's a, that's a real winner. Small Mario? Hey, they were right! That's the smallest Mario I've ever seen! He's so small you can't fucking see him! Yeah, but these are just ports. I'm looking for something I've never seen before. When am I gonna get to the good stuff? Maybe I'll find something in the, uh, uh, power cracker. Which, according to the game box, is the greatest game machine in the planet! Well, what are we waiting for? Get it out of there! Start digging! This one claims to have 76,000 games on it. Damn! If that's true, I'll be playing this for my entire life! Oh my god. There really are 76,000. I guess I'll order some takeout. Toy Story? Huh. 
I wonder what this one's like. Circus Charlie, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that from the movie. Again, this is just a bunch of mislabeled titles from the NES. I mean, there's not a single original game in here. What kind of human being does this? I mean, why'd they stop at 76,000? Why didn't they just say a million games, a billion, infinity, sky's the limit when you don't give a shit? Well, I mean, why don't we just try Super Mario? I mean, at least I know what I'm getting into. I have several questions. Mad? Who, me? No, I'm not mad. I mean, who's mad? How could I be mad when I bought a video game console that has Circus Charlie under 5,000 fucking different names? I'm fine! Crack this! Okay, this is it. I think this may be my final chance to find a game machine that no one has ever seen before. Luckily for us, I think I saved the best for last. The Pro Games Player. You a games player? You wanna be a pro? Then you're gonna need this, sucker. It's got 51 games in one, and they all look original, so I'm pretty excited to see what this has got to offer. Let's load it up and see something life-changing. What? No, 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 no. It, 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 no, it can't just be NES games again. The back of the box said it had original games. God damn it! What? Well, there they are. Why? Wait, wait, wait. You, you, you're telling me I have to take out the cartridge to play the games? I think I'm supposed to be upset right now, but more or less, I think I've just gone fully numb. Well, we gotta start this off the right way, so of course I'm gonna pick Hitting Mices. You know, this one really stood out to me, and I think they wanted it to, mainly because they printed it twice on the back of the box. Oh, complete with Nightmare. <laughs> Hitting Mices? Mices. What, mice wasn't good enough for you? You want to hit more? You want to pluralize the plural so you can hit more? You're a monster. In this game, you play as a cave gorilla throwing what seem to be, what is that, bean bags? At mice who are climbing up your wall. Now you gotta hit those mices, but you want to cushion the blow. You don't want them to die from one hit. You want to stop the mice before they curl up in these burrows. Also, it's got this power-up that makes you move faster and is impossible to play without. But that's basically it, gameplay-wise. There's nothing else to this game. All right, next. Exist? Yeah, I've been trying. A good game poses a philosophical question. A masterpiece does it right in the title. Look at that copyright year, 2005-18784. Man, it's gonna be a while till fair use kicks in on this one. No modding. Ah, it's a fish game. Yeah, definitely got that from the title. This is basically just feeding frenzy, except it's got this eight second loop of music that's driving me crazy. Now, I'm not exaggerating here. I timed it. It's eight seconds long. Come to think of it, this music's probably enjoyable for one kind of guy. A fish with a six-second memory span. <laughs> you know, I got a philosophical question myself. Why am I still playing this? All right, what's next? Uh, let's boot up Cute Fish. Oh, God! Cute Fish? Where is he? You mean this guy? I don't think you mean this guy. All right, well, at least we're past that horrible title screen. I see. Yes, I, uh, I, I certainly do understand what is happening here. Oh, 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 okay, okay, yeah. Cute fish. I get it. I don't get it. It's come to my attention that a lot of these games are aquatic themed. This one's called Core Idor. What a beautiful name she has. Too bad she's gonna lose her pretty face soon because she's going headlong at the goddamn speed of light into a bunch of bullshit. Help! And she's off! And by that I mean she disintegrated, she's dead! And this is M-Day, with an underscore in the title, because that makes sense. Also, we have, um, Danger Zone. Oh, let me tell you about it. What was so appealing about the underwater genre that they had to make this many of them? Is it because it was easier to program, or was it just because 90% of the backgrounds was just blue? Next game, Water Fire. Okay, yeah, seeing a lot of the water. Not so sure about the fire. I've been sitting here for like 10 minutes and I genuinely can't figure out how this one works. I think you're supposed to shoot only one certain color of barrel, green or red, but it doesn't matter which one you shoot. The guy on the right always wins. Why? For what reason? We cannot live in a world of chaos! Also, in regular fashion, the sound will cut out at will. And then come back. And then cut back out. And just like that, it's gone like a, like an angel's kiss. Next up, 
Xmas gift. Oh, I just know it's gonna feel like Christmas in here in a minute. Bootleg Santa's on a watch! Looks like he's got a couple of them bootleg eyes up there. I wonder what he's seeing. I wonder if he can see. Now hang on a sec, is this game called Xmas Gift or Gift Xmas? Or maybe the title is an equation, gift times mass equals... The theory of happiness? Nah, scratch that, some dumb idiot probably just don't get English. One Christmas night, evil Cloud Santa had a plight. His temper was not mild, he threw gifts at every man, woman, and child. Uh, hold on actually, at just one child. Yeah, I'm talking shit like hamsters, bananas, leaded screws that cause brain damage, apparently. I'm not sure what's happening here, but it can't be good. Oh my god! Uh, uh, Merry Christmas! You know, at first I was being harsh, but I've come to realize this game is actually very well researched. It recreates the ancient German Christmas time tradition. We go out in the snow with the flying pan and try to catch Sinterklaus's evil gifts from the sky! It is a great time for all kinder in Deutschland! Okay, let's get out of here before Santa notices. I don't want to get on this guy's bad list. Okay, moving on. Ed, ed, edacity snakes? You talking about Edacity or this city? That's just a snake from the Jungle Book. That's Ka! They use the same exact snake, except this time it looks like he peed on the rug and got in trouble for it. Bad snake! Bad! You copyrighted! I really need to know what's in this game. It's fucking... It's fucking snake. It's fucking shitty... It's fucking shitty ass snake! No, no, you, no, but you know what? I am not leaving until somebody tells me where Audacity fits in all this. I'll just move on to the next game. I need to get through this before I get a goddamn coronary. I'm going! I'm going! Pop Monster has jumped to the next platform. The game. Baby, you don't uh, need to jump. You have your choice of not one, but three spiral staircases back there. You don't gotta risk it. It's just this. Over. And over. And the music is just this. Over! Then over! Then over! Next! This one's called Trooper. And, oh, I think the only trooper I see here was the title screen itself. Hang in, buddy, we're sending back up. In this game, everyone is falling to Earth, and it's your job to, you know, murder them all. Press Y to blink around like a wizard. Am I breaking it? Is this breaking it? Please, God, let's just be breaking it. This type of game seems to be coming up frequently as well. These, uh, Space Invaders clones. It's not really a shmup, because you're not going anywhere. Things are just kind of falling at you. Uh, we got Robot, literally the same as Trooper. Archer, you play as a man who throws arrows with his bare hands. I believe we may be missing one of the two major ingredients in archery here. Perhaps this is how archery got started. Up there with Exist getting a bit of philosophy in here. Aether Fighter, just another version of Trooper, except this time you shoot pineapples. And final man. That's epic. He's the last one. Except he isn't. Because there's at least two or three other men over here. You're a liar. Wow, I'm getting fucking tired of this. Oh, and please, don't let me forget the star attraction here. Shootin' Balans! Or, excuse me, I'm sorry, I got this wrong. Actually, this is Hootin' Baloos! Another Santa Claus game? Hey, this is the same game as Xmas Gift, except this time Santa's not evil. And the graphics are kinda better, I guess. Hold on a second, is Xmas Gift a bootleg of Santa Claus? A bootleg of a bootleg inside a bootleg system! What kind of Christopher Nolan Inception level shit is this? I'm going deeper, Leo. Okay, next. We got Brave Boy. At least the title screen looks decent on this one. And hey, I'm a fan of adventure. I'm a brave boy. Not a brave enough boy for this! What even is this? When a monster catches you in this game, you give it a bath? Not that you'd even be expected to know that you're doing that, because the panel only shows up for a split second when you get hit. And it's not even you in the picture. It's some blue head kid in his underwear and a cape. Well, to elaborate, by this game's logic, you have to avoid giving things baths long enough to collect balls long enough to unlock this sword in the center that's encased in crystal. This little blue guy here can't catch you when you're in the houses or tubes or whatever this is, but the big blue guy can catch you from literally anywhere. Even if the top of his head scrapes you when he's outside of the building and you're inside of the building, he gets you. I'm on a bath, motherfucker. Careful! Y yep, yep, got it! Wow, that boy was so brave he sent someone else to get the sword for him. Magical kitchen! 
Surprise! It's hell on earth! It's bouncing suicidal fruit in a spatula! Next! Okay, this- this one- this one is just called Box's World. Look at his bear, look at his smug son of a bitch. He knows, he knows, he knows what he's doing. He's like, yeah, it's a game called Boxes World. What do you expect, Mary fucking Poppins? You seen the rest of these? And to top it off, it's just a clone of another game on the Sega Genesis called Shove It, where you slide boxes around, yay. Yeah, I think I remember seeing this one on my TI-83 calculator. The vast majority of the games on this system are puzzle games, and most of them are terrible. There were memory games, stacking games, two of the games on here I would classify as lawn care games. Yeah, they would be Radish Field and Lawn Purge, aka Cutting the Goddamned Grass. Why would I want to play a game where all I'm doing is chores? Isn't that what games are supposed to help us avoid doing? Especially when there were other such enticing titles on this console, like Stub Game, or as I like to call it, Stacking Fucking Cans! Alright, come on, what's next? I'm here for the ride at this point. I'm here till the fat lady sings! Alright, we got Germ Killer. Yeah, well, at least it means well. Just so sad. I I I can't explain it. <laughs> Next game. It's called Way Out. This game better just be a loaded gun or a noose. You promised me this. I I, I really I I have no idea what's going on here. Do you? She goes right when it points left. She goes left when it points right. There's no logic. There is no way out, is there? That's what you're trying to tell me, isn't it? I'm stuck here forever playing your barely functional games. Okay, one of the only playable games in here is called Extreme Robot. Surprise though, it's just Contra. I'm getting a, uh, I'm getting a little worn out at this point. I think I gotta take a rest. How about we book a room at the Oto Oto Hotel and have a nice na 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 nap? The bosses are really weird too. They're just, I don't even know what they are. What is that, a Roomba? Cardiac valve? Oh, mm, mm, this is the best, the finest bootleg. Four star, best in the city. Zag it! Oh boy, I can't wait to see what's up next. We got Boxing w Wurzel. I'm drawing the line at Boxing Wurzel, where they got Mike Tyson next to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Are they different games? Are they just one big game? So they just, you know, combine the sports then? You can't make me! Help! Help me! I'm being held against my will, my address is one, two, three, help! This is the Wurzel game I've ever played. Next! Oh, yeah! Oh, okay! I mean, that one looks pretty cool. I mean, it's ancient Chinese warfare. How could we go wrong? Just please give me this one. Just this one. It's... It, it's awful. It's all fucking awful! It's all of it! All of it! And every single one of them sucks! This whole thing is just filled with rip-offs! Police skill, it's Hogan's Alley. Guard farm, it's Duck Hunt. Desert gunman is Wild Gunman. Diamonds, Arkanoid. Close quarters, Top Gun. Horrible area, you got that right. Table tennis? Fucking Pong! <sighs> Alright. One last game. Let's give it a shot. Star. The Final Frontier. The very last game on the system. Could this be the one to save them all? You did it, John. Who, like Michael Jackson? You made it. You're one with the Cosmos. Oh, no. No, this can't be. You played them all, John. Now you can become a bootleg master yourself. No, 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 don't use your magic on me! So do you think you could run that whole thing by me one more time about where the light goes or whatever it is?
Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Say it again, say it to my fucking face. Help me! Wow, bootleg Mufasa, you sure do suck, and I wish I never invited you over. I don't like it! Okay, look, just as a heads up, I think something's wrong with your friend bootleg Zazu over there. You might want to check it out. Oh, hey! It's bootleg Jacques! What do you got for us today, buddy? Tally ho! I've come bearing news from the higher ups. Please advise. Oh, thanks. You will never know my suffering, forever trapped inside this robotic husk. Alright, that's great, Jacques. I'll see you later. What do we have here? Oh, look at that. A cease and desist from Disney. Yeah, that's probably about right. Alright, you two, get the hell out of my house. It's over. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, Disney's lawyers could get to me a little too easily. But I'll tell you what is much farther away from U.S. jurisdiction and far better at Disney bootlegging. China! Such examples of their bootleggery include Bear of the Interest, the self-purported baby's toy and also high-class weapon, who farts his uh, very well-known catchphrase, please play under the adult inspect to protect. I don't pretend, everyone knows that one. There is not a chance I'm interested in this bear! Yes, even a company like Disney, who is well known to be so very protective of its brands, wasn't exempt from the video game bootlegging phenomenon, much to their dismay. These games, as usual, take all forms and are generally cobbled together, producing hilarious results much of the time. So let's have ourselves a mag mag magical day, shall we? First off, let's have a look at some bootlegs based on the Lion King films, starting with, quite simply, a game called The Lion King. Hmm, copyright the Walt Disney Company. Well, at least they were nice enough to attribute it to the right people. Uh, that music. I don't think that's the Lion King. Mowgli begins his journey through the lion to find the man village. Mowgli, huh? The true, true to whole lion, huh? Also, Mowgli's head is down here. Why is this just the Jungle Book? This is just the Jungle Book game for NES with minor things changed. Like, instead of Mowgli, it's a bipedal lion that doesn't look like anything from The Lion King. You're still ripping off Disney with the Jungle Book. Why didn't you just rip off a Lion King game? This is some ass-backwards logic. Well, if you can't beat him, Join him. Okay, next up we have another one. The Lion King 5. Don't know where 3 and 4 went. I'm sure they'll give some sort of synopsis for those of us who missed out. Timon is really having a good time here, okay? You can tell by that mad flailing. In this game, you can select from three characters, Timon, Simba, and Pumbaa. Simba and Pumbaa look correct, but Timon has no ears and is wearing a bow tie. Like, what? You got the reference right on the other two. What's wrong with Timon? Oh, dear God, it's Walking Fingers. I mean, have you guys seen the movie? Uh, you couldn't have just put something here that wasn't Walking Fingers. A lizard, you know, a wildebeest. Not Walking Fingers is the main point I'm trying to make. This game is basically a reproduction of the one for Super Nintendo, but it controls much worse and it's super glitchy. Sometimes you can get farther by manipulating the edge screen and scroll. It's pretty wacky. It's so God, hard to control. God damn it, no! Ah, out of lives. Oh my god! Oh my god! My god! Are you kidding me? Simba fucking hangs himself when you get a game over? He just steps into a noose! He didn't even kick over a chair, the earth beneath him just gives way! Yes, as you see it, this game is apparently infamous for its ridiculous game over sequences, which also include Timon crying while digging his own grave and Pumbaa jumping into a pot of scalding water. Somebody made this, folks. This is real. I can't understand. The rest of the game is pretty standard. It's not meant to be shocking or anything. Maybe they just thought that made sense? <laughs> what can I say? Circle of life, circle of death, huh? Because you know it's, uh, it's a circular. I can't live in this world anymore! I saw Timon bury himself while crying. I saw the Pumba cook himself. It's over for me. Ah, never mind. I'll keep going. I got the Lion King 2 on Genesis here, okay? How can I say no to that face? They're getting very close to just calling it the Lion King and having it be about the Lion King. Very close. We're almost there. 
Now, most bootleg games of this nature are made with recycled sprites and assets, but this one here is unique in that it was made from the ground up as its own game. You never know what you're gonna get with this. From the day we arrived on the planet I was scared of Mufasa's face Seriously! Maybe they could have taken some of the face they gave to Mufasa and funneled it into little Simba over here. Looks like he got his head door slammed by Uma Thurman and killed Bill. Hmm, the Lion King is looking markedly more, uh, how you say Chinese this time around. What was that pussy shit? Get the fuck out of here! All right, whatever, that's a little better, I guess. I'm not gonna scold you twice in a row, whatever. The Lion King 2, we're in China now. Deal with it. Zone 1, Guilin? What the hell is Guilin? Well, I guess this is Guilin. Good old Mufasa over here seems to get the joke, huh? Once again, given that this game was made from the ground up, I don't understand why every single enemy has nothing to do with the Lion King. This one kind of works on Mario rules. If you grab the big ball of gas, you turn into older Simba, and if you get hit, you turn into smaller Simba. Ah, crap, I died. Wait, what, why? Why again with the brutality? He's just hanging here again from a rope, this time not around his neck, granted. He's clinging to dear life while ominous music plays. I mean, do, do the Chinese just resent Simba or something? You can tell this game is supposed to play like the SNES version of Lion King, which the sprite of Simba is directly ripped from, but it can't quite pull it off. Jumps are hard, everything is floaty, and it's overall just pretty tedious. Ah, yes! Chin's tomb! How could I forget? The terracotta soldiers really tied it all together. And Scar was there. Yeah, around here they start getting too cute with their level design. It's like making a linear platformer wasn't enough for them. They had to show off their programming skills too. Like in this level, you come to a dead-end door that makes a weird noise when you show up to it. Come on, what is this, a glitch? What a joy. So after like 30 literal minutes of me running around wanting to blow my brains out, I finally figured out what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to kill all the enemies in the section you're in, and only then will the door open up for you. But good luck, baby, because that's only door number one. Out of like 200. Ah! Ah, no! Go! Stop it! Not to mention, you end up going back and forth between the same doors on accident because it all looks the same. Also, why is this game set in Imperial China? The longer I play, the angrier I get about it. How the lions walk from Africa to there is pretty far. I honestly don't know why I'm still torturing myself by playing this. I've been here for over six hours and I've got nothing to show for it. All my life leading up to this moment has been worth it. Every last second. I am truly blessed. Beep, beep, beep! Oh, sorry! What's that? Oh, that's just a you can't make this shit up alarm! Get out of my brain! No, guys, honestly, come on. If you're wondering where this imagery of Simba cruising atop a swastika laden blimp comes from, well, it's very simple, okay? Hitler was a big fan of the Disney Renaissance. <laughs> Well, anyways, after that life changer, you just walk off screen to the right and the game ends. What a way to go. Hey, don't you see? The final boss was confronting the Nazi inside of all of us. Hell, I think at least. I don't know. That's all I got. Okay, moving on from The Lion King, we have Mulan for Genesis. Calm down, Mushu, would you? Maybe tread a little more lightly. Some people are trying to sleep around here. Wanna be a man. Well, I mean, I don't know. I I've considered it. I don't know if I'm ready to make the decision, though. But thanks for the offer. If you haven't seen the movie, this is a horribly mistranslated reference to the song Be a Man from Mulan. But hey, at least they're trying to give us the option, huh? All right, the game starts. And of course, they don't use the song that this level is based on. Why would they? What the fuck? You know those people. They're your friends. Yeah, in, in the movies, she's friends with these characters, but I guess in the world of pirated games, it's just a free-for-all. Oi, what is this? A Freddy Krueger glory hole? The absolute most I can say for this game is that at least it attempts to be somewhat familiar with the subject matter. The characters look pretty convincingly like they could be from an actual Disney licensed game, so all right. Greatest 
wall. Nah, it's completely subjective. <laughs> Snow Planet? Yeah, as you know, Mulan has always been the best sci-fi. <gasps> and he's dead. All right, nice job, guys, except for on those hearts. They're terribly, terribly asymmetrical, and you should be ashamed. Hey there, John. Who are you? I'm the Great Bootleg. That's hokey, and old Jontron was better. Wanna see something real bad? No. Too bad, bitch. Dying, 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 death, death, help, help, barf, 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 no one can stop the pain, please can you stop the pain? Oh, that's gross, man, what the hell? Oh, horrific. And then magically, John got the box of that disc. <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys. Okay, every now and then, you see something you just can't believe is real. This is one of those moments. How could anyone have let this happen? Seven Clever Boys? Are, are these the boys? They don't look so clever. Uh, come to think of it, neither does anyone in this picture. They look like they were the result of a brother and sister who liked each other maybe just a little too much. This is an actual licensed game for the PS2. Shit, I would have preferred Lion King 2 over this nonsense. Oh, this is real, all right. Look at that menu screen. Okay, we got a confused starfish, an artistic crab, a very stupid alligator, and this thing. Also, we got the main cast here in the middle feeling very stranded and very helpless to amend the situation they're in. Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys. Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys! What is that fucking name? Who made this? I'm not gonna get over that. I, I absolutely guarantee you I'm never gonna get over that name. I'm a clever boy. Put me in, huh? Put me on that. Get me in that. But I digress. This game starts off with like a film. Not quite so long ago and not so far away, Near back the seventh menu, town to across menu, the seventh menu, river, to menu, there was a beautiful forest, kept perfectly in order by seven clever and thoughtful young boys. And here they are. And here they are! Let's get right to it, come on! First, there was Cubby, who was like a small bear. A small bear? In what sense is this child like a small bear? He's not even wearing a bear on a t-shirt or anything. And then there was Big Basil, who was huge. Well, for a boy, he was huge. Ah, it's too late, narrator! You already called the kid fat, it's not going back! And then Sonny, who took care of the plants and the animals. What? And was also a very racist depiction of a black person. This game was approved by Sony with that in it? Nice call, guys. Really good one. Also, maybe, you know, next time don't take too much fashion advice from Uncle Sam and the Harlem Globetrotters. This is my song. I'll sing it now. Oh, sick lyrics, dude. Sick song! Get me out of here. Get me out of here right now. The real game, if you could call it that, is just absolute nothingness. It's literally just mini games of sliding puzzles, jigsaw puzzles, and coloring books. I don't know what convinced someone that this is the thing that they should make for the world to see. But you out there who made this, I got one thing to say to you. Alright? Follow your dreams. But not this hard. Don't, don't follow them so hard that this happens, but follow your dreams. Well done. Back to menu. Next. Well, I think we covered it all. I think that's everything. Let it go! Let it go! Don't hold it back anymore! Another letter? Huh. I feel unexplained joys and sorrows, but alas, I am synthetic. All right, Chuck, come on, I'm doing something here. Dress up who? Oh. I gotcha. This was a mistake! Well, actually, Dress Up Who is a website, I guess, with dress up games and girl games. We got Poo Kitchen Slacking, it's girl games. We got Clean Up Horse Farm 2, no boys allowed. Also, I gotta check out Clean Up Horse Farm 1 sometime. Sounds, sounds pretty good. Easily, the most fascinating thing about this website is its section on Frozen games, which there are so many of, but nothing, nothing comes close to the majesty of the crowning jewel of this website. 
the one, the only, Elsa. Frozen brain surgery. Frozen brain surgery. What? I cannot even fathom this. At this moment, I'm truly dumbfounded. It's elegant. It's wonderful. It's got a low chance of survival. Oh my God! Right there, right in the right in the brain. Okay. Nighty night, Elsa. It's magical. Well, I, Elsa, I think I, I I see the problem. I see where where, where, you might, where you might be having some problems. Just gonna just gonna remove these off of you, Elsa. Just don't worry. Okay, the rock. We're getting the rock right out of your brain. And like nothing ever happened. This game was barely girly enough for me. I'm gonna need to see a more great girl games, please. You know, this is fucked right up. There she is. Let's measure that baby. How big is that baby? Yeah, that's about that's the size of a baby, everyone. Yeah, that baby's got a heart too. Unlike the creator of this shit. How many of these are there? Is this a thing? Is this just like an unknown genre? <laughs> Fuck. No! You are the most adorable baby in the world. I wouldn't say that. Oh my god, you're just gonna walk away? You're gonna turn somebody's baby into a zombie and just gonna you know, dawdle away? Your beautiful baby has a fucking hand coming out of his head now. You're just gonna look mildly disappointed she, when she just walks away? Is, is there a procedure for zombification of baby? Just put a little ointment on it. Yeah, get some of that. Just drop that in the Petri dish. Get that horn. Yeah, take the hand off. See, that was really bugging me. Oh! He's fixed! What the hell is this? Elsa, don't give me that cheeky look. Alright, you got yourself into this mess. I'm the one helping you get out of it. You're not doing me any favors here. Elsa baby birth. Elsa milking cow. Pregnant Elsa foot check. Oh my god! <laughs> Absolutely horrific. Elsa, what have you been doing uh, out there? Why this? Why pregnant foot doctor? How do these concepts sync up? At least there's a nice snowman in the background. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, God. Oh, gee. Oh, Lord in heaven. Why? I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna actually throw up. I'm not even... <coughs> <coughs> Oh my god, I'm actually gonna barf. I'm not fucking around. Well, I can firmly say, uh, I didn't like Frozen 4, but that was a solid 10 out of 10 for me. Gonna go watch that movie again, give it, give it, a, give it a two thumbs up. I'm scarred for life. This, this is not a joke. This is not a part of the program. This is for real. I'm... I'm can still see it. <laughs> Get out of my brain. <laughs> wow, what a ride! Thanks for watching!